Uh, in studio with us this morning, before they take off from Myrtle Beach, uh, Spencer Dupuis and the sports doctor, Colin McLaughlin, here as well. Gentlemen, good morning to you. Good morning. Good morning, Rob. You guys are headed onto the highway soon? Yeah, very soon. So yeah. watch out. Who's driving? He's driving the first split, four. Yeah. I'll drive the last four. Hours, you mean? Yes. Yeah. yeah. I just wanted to make sure. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. I'm not sure what left. you you guys are twenty somethings men heading on down <laughs> south like spring break week. You know who knows what you're going to do. Uh, what's the schedule this week? We don't have any games today, correct? No games correct. today. Uh, it'll Mingo Bay Classic will begin tomorrow. Let me uh, double check on the schedule here before I speak wrong. I should know the schedule by now. And Nick Verzlini's meeting you down there? Yes. He took the rest of the weekend off to go spend with family as his sister lives down in North Carolina. So, oh, very nice. You know, a little halfway there before us. And what high school teams are down there this week from our area? Uh, it'll be Martinsburg, Washington, Hedgesville, and Jefferson. So four out of the six teams are two teams from Jefferson County and then two teams from... How come the other ones don't go? Any uh, idea? Is it by invitation? There's not that I know of. There's a story about one, and then Spring Mills goes on and off every year. I don't. I can't attest. They just, to, they just alternate, and the other one's yeah. got some business going on. I can't attest to what happened there. That was previous to me getting here. I have heard some things, but I won't speak on them because mm-hmm. I don't know them to be fact. Okay. Well, you're the first one. I don't know. How journalistic <laughs> of you. <laughs> It's a big thing lately here in the Eastern Panhandle Great. sports. Great, he's got standards. <laughs> that doesn't help us. <laughs> we want some stick. We want some slop. Yeah, give us the scoop. Yeah, he's not going to be invited to our club. <laughs> he's not going to be here on Fridays, Bill. No, he's got standards. True. Journalistic standards and integrity. You can respect that. Yeah. All right. So, uh, Colin, of the four teams who are going down there, who's got the best season so far going on? So. It has to be uh, Hedgesville, even though Martinsburg just beat them earlier this week. They were on a six-game win streak before that. Unfortunately, the hottest team in the area, Musselman, who has now, I believe, 12 or 13, 13 wins. straight wins. Yeah, they're, they're one of the uh They started 0-3, and teams. they've won like 13 in a row? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yes. they started 0-3 on the year and have now won 13 straight wow. games and are looking really good, but unfortunately, they're one of the... Uh, to not making the trip down to Myrtle Beach. so oh, They are making the trip, though, around the state. They'll be going up to the northern Panhandle, taking on some schools, coming down to Ripley, and then coming back home for a game against Hampshire on Friday. This week during spring break week? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. And what what's our baseball schedule tomorrow? What time's our first game? First game, first pitch scheduled for 3 p.m. Again, that you're at a tournament. Sure, so it can go either way. Don't know how long it's going to be exactly. Who do you, who do you have? Clock. It'll be Martinsburg versus Archbishop Malloy out of North, or excuse me, New York. That's a th- set for 3 p.m. And depending on the timing of the game, we're going to try. That's at the historic Mike Johnson Park in Georgetown. We're going to try to make the 15 minute drive up to uh, Waccamaw and uh, potentially get on Washington versus Waccamaw. That's a 5:30 scheduled start. Depending on where they are, we're going to hopefully be able to jump into that game. Unless you know that school is way ahead of schedule, mm-hmm. and we're way behind schedule where we're broadcasting from, uh, but that's the day one schedule. Day two we'll of Hedgesville versus, ironically, a team from West Virginia in Princeton, set for twelve thirty. That that'll be at a school west of Coastal Carolina, and then we'll head back to Georgetown for the night cap on Wednesday. Martinsburg versus Georgetown, the host school at Mike Johnson Park. Then Thursday, Jefferson versus High Point Christian Academy out of North Carolina. We saw that team last year. They battled in a game, I believe, against Martinsburg, if I remember correctly, at Myrtle Beach High School. So that's in Myrtle Beach proper. Then at the end of the or then we'll head down for a four thirty game as Martinsburg will take on Shady Spring, another West Virginia team, uh, at Georgetown at Mike Johnson Park and the Nightcap Washington will take on Georgetown at seven PM. Uh, and then Friday, these games will get seeded out of how they do in those three days. And then if anybody makes it to the championship, will be a Saturday. Uh, no team in the area did that last year. And the Love Doctor is going to be running the controls back here while the Sports Doctor and you and Nick the Knife are down there. Yes, along with Trip Tobin. He's going to join us for a few games. Oh, very yep. nice. How many teams are involved, Spencer? Well, 30? There's two weeks of this. So it's last week. Was some teams, a lot of the teams, like I believe um, so the Myrtle Beach team participated, like their their own high school, they participated last week. I know a lot of uh, Northern Virginia teams participated in there last week. Uh, but, I mean, I think about 60 teams plus go down there over a two-week span. By the way, John Gilstrap, 
And thank you, Stacy. Stacy Burkett said, we just saw a new addition and Johnny Gill. <laughs> if you caught that in the Facebook comments. <laughs> <laughs> I did see that. I, yes. Was he any good? I, you can't, was he, he's, Johnny Gill's great, great, man. He, he, was, oh, okay. he was like a young Barry White in his day. All right. The voice, you know. Well, he had it going on. Well, that's Barry White. Then he that sounds just like me. <laughs> <laughs> hey, baby. Close. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You probably should have done that. <laughs> I don't know if Dylan's recording yet, but if he is, we're going to save that part. He is, he is sure <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. recording. Yeah, that's going to be in a promo somewhere. <laughs> yeah. When are you guys headed back? Uh, Sunday. Maybe Saturday, depending on things, but probably Sunday. That's Depends on how it turns out. Yeah. Right? All right, that's cool. Uh, you, how many times have you guys been down there now? This is our second time. Yep. This will be our second time. All right, cool. Uh, you check the weather. Colin, you said it's going to be warmer here than there this week? That's what it kind of looks like in what the uh, talk of all the teams has been. So we've been looking, and it's supposed to be uh, basically the same, if not colder down there than it is. But you say colder, and it's it's going to be in the 70s, and it's going to be in the 80s here. Well, that's that's nice. Yeah, that 70s is okay. Still too hot to sleep, but... (laughs) (laughs) The oppressive 78 degrees that you were forced to sweat under, yes. Uh, so, uh, you guys found some favorite places down there when you're down there uh, last time? Well, places we're, we're staying whatever? in a different part this time. So, yeah. the Mogul hooked us up with a nice place down in Pauly's Island near Waccamaw, near Georgetown. Last time we were staying up in Mar- or Myrtle Beach proper. Okay. So, and you have different locations you have to go to for yes, each of these games. Exactly. And, yes. and these games are televised. So you guys do the whole TV camera and everything. Yep. Yes. Uh, that... Uh, but you say mentioned favorite places last year. Finally, got to knock off the pub sub off the list. The pub sub, Publix, the grocery store chain. They yeah. make really good subs. It was good. Nice. My my Which cousin, is ironically, right where near where where we are going to be. Oh, that works well. My cousin Amy, who's an actress, is was uh, in a, as a teenager was a Publix uh, model, like on the billboard. <laughs> she was like one of the one of the kids they had up there on the billboard. Humble starts, humble beginnings. You know, two young fellows going down to Myrtle Beach, and they're looking for the best sub to find. It's a generational change. <laughs> Billy should give them your test on the drive down there. Up until the last day, we, we were making the joke uh, last year that we didn't even know that there was a beach down at Myrtle Beach. Because you never get to see it. Because we never got to yeah. see yeah, the beach until, until last, the very last yeah. day, and that was only because... Unfortunately, none of the teams made the championship bracket, so they weren't playing Saturday. Yeah, it's, well, you guys do two games a day, and you, sometimes those fields are an hour two, apart. Two, sometimes three, yeah, it, yeah. It's a lot of fun, though, getting to do our best to try to cover all the local teams. And I know uh, as a high schooler, they, they have a blast down there because they only play one time, and then they can go actually enjoy themselves at the beach or whatever. Are there whatever. many locals who make the drive down there, uh, family members or whatever? I'd assume so because it's spring break. So yeah, and I know like see their kids play a mm-hmm. lot. They, uh, from what I understand, most teams from here don't take buses down there. Their families just all go down. We just drive down to mom and dad. Yeah. That's so, nice. Our carpool. Yeah. Well, that's those are big places for a tournament. We went to Myrtle Beach for a week in the summer, ten, twelve years ago, and just going up and down the elevator in the condo complex we stayed in, there were people, moms and dads and kids there with for baseball tournaments. Yep. It's a big location for it. So it's a good, good place to go for a week. Yeah. All right. Well, have a good time, man. Thank you. Thank you. En- enjoy your drive. You guys can bolt now if you want to. Whatever. You're welcome to hang out and be with us the next two hours and delay your ride as much then. You will still hear our voices from 6 to 8 a.m. and Collins throughout the day. Yeah, because Colin will still be doing the yep. news. Spencer will still be doing the sports. Right? Yeah. Don't forget. And if you do, make sure you wake up Nick and make him do it. Or, yeah. You guys all staying in the or same me. place? Yeah. yeah. Nice Airbnb. Shout out to Mogul Mike Hornby. Hey, Cresh or Hornby? You're not you're not staying with like Cresh's sister, are you? No, no, no. That, <laughs> that was gotta... nearly an option last year in a bind because yeah. uh, we didn't get the best hotel initially last year. That's true. So it's a whole different story. Sounds like that's a, a whole different story for another <laughs> well, show. Well, there's a story there. I was about to say that hotel was. What happened in the hotel? Uh, well, m- a multitude of things, but but let's just say I couldn't. I didn't get the card out, and Colin just pushed the door open. So the yeah. doors weren't even locked, so we couldn't stay there. Because the sto- the doors wouldn't lock. Yeah, yeah they wouldn't lock. We, we were reading a review, and that was one of them, so I wanted to see if it was uh, true. But unfortunately, we didn't read the reviews until probably two hours from arrival. 
instead of, you know, weeks before <laughs> yeah. when we were booking the hotel. But You um, walked in and said, what's that red stain on the rug and wall? No, that was also in <laughs> Why is there yeah. plastic on the floor? <laughs> yeah, there, there, there was, yeah. What's that smell? Yep. Why so, are they dragging the previous guest up by the ankles? What is, what is all this? A lot of people were requesting um, not staying there. Yeah. So. We weren't the only ones, but oh, I, I, that's that, starting yeah, to come back to me now. I remember we found a condo, and then this year found an Airbnb. So. Well, they were both Airbnbs, Colin. I know. But. You just love to correct Colin, don't you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we're not getting into that this morning. I got an eight-hour. That's my to pastime: <laughs> uh, correcting Colin. Yeah. Where'd you guys get the merch, man? You Shout both, out Trip this Tobin is from Trip yeah. Berkeley Post fourteen Hornets, which we will be broadcasting once again. This that's summer. nice. Well, very good. Well, good luck to you guys. Have a good game and uh, games, and enjoy your weather down there too. Thank you. Enjoy the enjoy warmer it. weather up here. Oh. Enjoy not having to deal with us in studio. Yeah, this is going to be the great. Biggest blessing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you can do your work for the most part as long as you want to, because there's no morning games. That's true. Yeah, yeah. All is well. Yeah. Oh, very nice. All right. Well, have a good time, man. Thank, Thank you. you. You're quite welcome. I'll turn your mics. You are on three, and you are on five. There you go. All right, that's uh, Spencer Dupuis and Colin McLaughlin, the uh, sports doctor and the program director, oh, and they gave us the best piece of news we could have had all week, and that's Dylan's nickname, so, <laughs> which is a good one, too. <laughs> I might ask, that's not a bad nickname at all. I kind of like that one. Uh, hey, uh, Bill, we had J.B. McCuskey in the studio on Friday, and uh, I was listening to his the clip that Colin lifted for the news there, and he is he is unlike anybody else that we've interviewed. I don't think that he gave us a lot of... Uh, talking, you know, Republican talking points, checklist stuff. I thought he actually had his own plan. He actually kind of uh, articulated it pretty well, actually, I think. I thought he did a very good job. Uh, uh, you'll not challenge J.B.'s intelligence. He is an exceptionally intelligent fellow. Uh, I think he's a very uh, uh, passionate individual. Uh, he he works hard at his job. I think he's at a disadvantage because most folks do not really know what the state auditor does. Right. Uh, S Secretary of State, you have some sense of it. Attorney General, you have some sense, uh, but not the not the auditor. Uh, but J. B. I thought acquitted himself very well. I agree. Uh, I'm a. Uh, uh, he, to my mind, uh, I asked the question that to, to several of them that justice has left the legacy of the roads what will be your legacy if you sh happen to get elected and all the ones that i've heard at this point in time i thought jb had the strongest the most uh uh most definite statement what he would like to do and that was early childhood education yeah, he went after that pretty strong, he didn't did, he? Yeah, right. JB's been running for governor. Well, he hasn't been running for governor for I think a few years now, because I think I don't think it was a big secret that he was going to run for governor next. And I think some people think he might be like one away, once removed. But he's very driven, and as I said, I thought he articulated his points uh, without giving me a bunch of playbook talking point yeah. stuff, if you know what I mean. Uh, yeah. That you get other uh, sometimes other places, and we try we tend to dismiss individuals we do not know. Uh, and J. B. Mikulski is not well known in the Eastern Panel. Mm -hmm. He is much better known in the southern part of the state. Uh, his father was a a well known lawyer, and so and been well established for many many years. So J. B. is well known there. Uh, he's got. Some work to do, though, uh, for the northern panhandle and the eastern panhandle. He's got to get better known around yeah, the state, exactly. right? Exactly. Yeah. Hey, uh, a couple of big dates in history here. I want to get you guys' takes on this, too. 1912, the RMS Titanic set sail on her maiden and only voyage. That was the state, 1912. In 1970, Paul McCartney announces he's leaving the Beatles. Okay? Now, those are 58 years apart. They're still two very iconic moments in i don't know if you want to call it titanic pop culture history but it certainly became that with the movie right so my my question for you bill is uh, what was the weather like that date in 1912 when they set sail that's the first one cold, cold and brisk, and cold and brisk. I, I remember the uh, big snowflakes falling <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it, it was a uh, a day to be remembered, Rob. A mm -hmm. day to be remembered. But you didn't you know somebody who was doing some underwater work and trying to recapture some parts of the Titanic? Well, I 
gentleman that found the Titanic, uh, Bob Ballard. I've yeah. uh, I've known Bob uh, not well, but uh, over the years I've known Bob and. Uh, other gentleman, Craig McLean, has has done some diving uh, and knows Bob very well. So, in fact, Bonnie and I had a series of deep submersible Alvin dives that goes down to twelve thousand feet. Uh, we were we were actually bumped off our week because Ballard wanted to uh, send some ROVs, remotely operated vehicles, uh, through the bowels of the Titanic, uh, and so Bonnie and I were delayed one week before we took our uh, uh, our series of dives. Uh, interesting, uh, this is back in the uh, 80s, uh, and even John's young enough, he can remember the uh, back in the 80s. Uh, there was every night on the news was another uh, discovery that Ballard had made uh, sending this ROV remotely operated vehicle through the Titanic. So when we got on the on the uh, the mothership of the uh, getting ready for our dives on the uh, uh, on the Alvin, uh, we talked to the pilot and said, "Man, Ballard had a great trip. He did a lot of discoveries." He said, "Yeah, the first day the ROV worked well. After that, he milked." from the first day, but from the first day exploration or discovery, they found a lot. Uh, there's, uh, uh, it's kind of interesting, um, the, uh, how Ballard found, found the Titanic. Uh, there are two or three stories, one of which I've, I've been told over the years that Ballard had the coordinates uh, provided to him from the Navy. Uh, I've heard other stories that it was uh, more just a, a freak discovery. They all knew where it was supposed to be, but no, but it was just uh, uh, Bob happened to find it at that time. There was another ex uh, explorer about the same time, right before Ballard, that missed it by one swath. He, if he had taken one more pass, he would have found the uh -huh. Titanic. But the story that I like, and I, and I, I want to say I'm not sure this is true. I've never heard Ballard himself say this, uh, but I've heard other folks that supposedly know the story uh, that say it was true, that that, uh, that the Navy knew the, had discovered the Titanic uh, with their very sophisticated technology. Uh, they were reluctant to disclose that they knew where it was. They did not want to tip their hands about how sophisticated their, their equipment was. But they were also afraid that someone other than American would discover the Titanic or someone from one of the... Uh, uh, some country would discover it other, as opposed to some pirates that were out exploring it. And they could take full advantage. They could... Uh, uh, they they would claim it was theirs. So the Navy was reluctant for this to happen, so they provided Ballard the coordinates. Uh, and then Ballard asked the French to join them on a joint exploration. Uh, and Bob gave the French the first option to look for the Titanic, which they were going back and forth, what they call mowing the grass, mm -hmm. and getting close to the coordinates. And Bob supposedly found some debris on the bottom he, that he associated with the Titanic, he basically said, okay, French, you've had your shot, it's my shot. So the next pass through uh, Titanic was discovered. But if anybody sh deserves credit, should deserve credit, it's Bob Ballard. I think he's one of the more honorable uh, ocean explorers that we have, uh, has discovered a lot of things, and he's done it the way it's supposed to be done. He's done it fairly and honestly, and he's, he's not tried to take personal advantage of, it, of the discoveries. What, what's the rule on salvage rights? Could he have said, hey, look at this, I, I, I get to keep all this? Well, that's, that all gets in the court system. There's a, uh, there's a vessel called the Central America that, dis uh, that went down uh, between uh, Charleston and, uh, and Hatteras, Cape Hatteras, uh, back in 1850 or 1860. Uh, in those days, they took gold uh, from uh, uh, from San Francisco Mint that were minted and to the Panama Canal Zone and then transported with with uh, train or rail and then loaded on another ship. The uh, Central America or Columbus, I, I just called it a second ago, whatever the ship I called it a second ago, uh, was on its way full of this newly minted gold, and it sunk. And uh, a group from Lamont Doherty, uh, Oceanographic Institute uh, in Ohio State, several several ones that were involved uh, 
found the gold. And it's been a long time in trying to determine who owns the gold from the ship. I'm not sure it's been settled. It's been going on 15 to 20 years. But is there an overarching body of law that that if... If I find a sunken vessel, because people go, this is, they're living, right? They go out to, yeah. to try to salvage these things. Yeah. So is there a body of law that says if, if it's sunk, it belongs to whoever finds it? or is it? Well, it, it depends where you are. If you're within 12 miles of the coastline, it belongs to the, uh, uh, to the country where the ship or relic is lying. Uh, if it's not within 12 miles, then the question is, does, the, does it belong to the owners? Does it belong to the uh, person that discovered it, the coordinates, or does it belong to the people that actually did the recovery of the of the ship? So it's a it's a legal tangle. So these people are spending a lot of money up front with no guarantee of a return. Exactly right. That's the case with the Central America as well. A lot of money was spent in developing equipment, and I don't know if they've gotten any money out of it or not. The the deep submersible is it Alvin? Yeah, yeah. Who owns that? Uh, National Science Foundation. Okay, so. It's 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 not a it's not a military owned vessel. No, actually it's not. A, now, in fact, it's much deeper than military owned vessels. The, the Navy has, they may have other uh, more recent vessels. I, my information is dated. I've been out of the area for, arena for about twenty years. The Navy had something they called an NR one uh, that was capable of going down, to, I think, eight or nine thousand feet, but it could stay underwater for several several days. It was strictly for research purposes. And the Alvin uh, is free. It is not tethered, uh, but it can only stay down for maybe 12 hours. And these remote vehicles like, went through the Titanic. There's, well, 100 years, give or take, of silt. That's, that Doesn't it stir all that up? Don't you leave a, an opaque path behind what the, the ROV as it goes through these, these areas? I don't. I don't know, John. I don't right. know. The uh, the film that uh, that Bob Ballard picked up uh, with the ROV uh, did not have a was not covered with uh, with clouds. Now, if you look behind yourself behind the ROV, then there there's a lot of clouds of silt. But the camera faces forward, so it has not yet stirred up the. Uh, and no bodies were found, right? I don't think so. I don't know. Of course, that is something with respect to the dead that nobody's really going to advertise. Mm -hmm.